When you're looking at dump trailers, there's a million things to look at between cost and quality. And I'm gonna come right out and say this. I think that Diamond C right now is making one of the best dump trailers on the market. Load Trail is probably just a little bit behind this Lamar. But either way, I wanna go through and tell you why I chose this Lamar. And it's going to be a combination of cost and quality. If you've talked to any salesman about the Lamar trailers, they're gonna talk about the seven gauge floor and they're gonna compare that to a 10 gauge floor that most other trailers have. Now the difference here, you'll see there is no weld up the center. The pro to that is things slide out easy. You have nothing to get to. You have a seven gauge floor rather than a 10, but that's gonna depend on the brand. But the con is with the weld down the center, your one piece metal starts up here. It is one piece, it's bent and then it rolls over and is welded. That is why we only have a one piece on the floor because our sides, albeit very sturdy, are a separate piece of metal. And you can see the welds as you go up the trailer. The next thing you'll hear is rigid rails. These rails are welded on the top and then they are bent over and down and welded along the bottom. So you've boxed this in where a lot of other trailers will actually have C-channel that is bent up and over and is connected to this piece on the side. What's stronger? Probably the box steel in this case. I also like the fact that we have tie downs here if you're gonna use it for a tarp or whatever else you might want to connect to. And then you also have your stake pockets on the outside, not on the internal part of the rail. So you can have as much two by four as you'd like or anything that's sticking down. So this also gives you a great place to tie down to if you need it. But if you wanted to set something up, you have a great place for a two by four to sit up and then your rail to be added to the side of this unit. Two things stand out to me in this area. First is Lamar makes their own fenders. I like that they're actually bent around, fabricated, welded up good and taken care of. They're not just a purchased diamond plate. Not that those are bad, but these are very sturdy. Second, your tires that are here are balanced which is a big deal to me because sometimes you can get these that are so unbalanced that when you go down the road, the whole trailer shakes. So the balanced tires make this travel down the road very, very smooth. Axle placement is another one. If you get these axles a little too close to the middle, you'll get a teeter-totter effect while you're going down the road, especially with weight. It'll try to lift and drop the back end of your truck a lot. There's enough weight put forward on the truck that you don't have that teeter-tottering even when you're empty. We can look at this step as a pro or a con. It is nice that you have a step. It is fairly small, but it's easy to even climb into the trailer by using that step. I like having it there, especially if you're gonna use this as an equipment trailer to tie something down. There's only a step on the driver's side is on the passenger side, you have the spare tire carrier. They still had room in case you didn't use the spare tire carrier to put one in, but with that said, they did not. The things I liked in the back were the D-rings that hold the door closed. These D-rings can also be used to tie things down, and I think that they work quite nice. As with any dump trailer now, you're gonna find that this has a three-way door. So you have the barn door, you have a gate that's gonna come out, and this does have the chains to stop it if you're gonna spread gravel. And you can also remove this hinge from the top, and it would be a standard tailgate. Now also on the back is these drop legs. If you're loading heavy equipment, you have an easy drop that you can put this down in secure yourself from kind of lifting the front end of the truck too much. Just make sure that you don't put them down too far and then you'll end up being stuck and not being able to pull the pin as the trailer comes down. The ramps in the back are held in by a pin. There is no gate. These are fairly easy to move in and out. Uh, they're not my favorite part. If you're unloading something very lightweight on this, the the amount of room between the traction pieces on the way up are pretty big so if you're putting like a small lawn tractor in here it's not going to work as well but if you're using something larger like a skid steer it's going to be absolutely perfect pulling them in and putting them out is no problem the jack up front is a 12,000 pound jack pretty standard and the hitch down there is a 
Demco, which is very nice. It works out quite well, easy to lock, and it is adjustable. This gusset section around here makes this trailer look very beefy. But what I really liked about it is that nothing is too far forward. I can still drop my tailgate, get in and out of this, even if I'm slightly turned. Some of the other trailers, I didn't have that option. There's a place for an extension cord so you can use the battery charger that's inside. And this box does have a hydraulic ram that will hold it up. Now the kicker is it doesn't come up too high. I wish it would come up a little bit further. Uh, that's just part of the gig. There is a lot of storage up in front. They do separate this box for the battery and everything and the motor hydraulics to be in the back. And then you have a box up front if you want to put in straps or a chain or anything like that. I also like how this worked as far as it closing. It is a little bit loose, but it does seem to do the job quite well. If you look at a lot of other trailers, they actually build this tarp in a box that sits up front so it's protected if you're going to drop something on it. Here, I feel we have the same protection. You might hit this rail. Uh, that's the only part that is really exposed if you were dropping gravel or anything on it. But other than that, this is still protected, maybe just not in a box like everything else. So what I liked about this is that it's easier to work on if I needed to do something or move something around. So while it's not fully enclosed, it sort of is enclosed backwards. This trailer has power up, power down, and gravity down, where many of them are just power up and power down. And what I liked about this was the fact that I could power up on battery, gravity down, and save the battery, or power down if I wanted to go faster. Now this is a scissor lift, and it says it's rated to lift more than the capacity of the trailer so you don't get stuck. I've been in the situation where we've had a lot of gravel far forward in this because we use the gravel in the back and it still lifted everything, no issue. Secondly, from any Lamar salesman, they're gonna tell you that there's 12 inches between the center supports on the bottom, which is good because you have the seven gauge, which is thicker, you have more supports across the bottom. The, this is all C-channel. It's not boxed. Well, very little of it is boxed. This forward section is boxed because of the scissor lift but most of the back is a C channel. Looking down here in the bottom of the trailer, we have a very large heavy duty I-beam frame and that allows us to kind of sit this box right on top of this I-beam frame and get a 28 inch deck height in the back. Now that is important. I didn't want to go with the drop axles because you can usually get some that are four inches drop. That would give you 24 inches of deck height. Great if you're putting a big skid steer in there. Horrible if you have to dump because when you dump, you will end up pushing this trailer right to the ground. And even though the dump angle is there, it's really harder to get your material out of this because you are so close to the ground when you change up everything and make it so much lower. The big deal here is this large cylinder that is on the scissor lift. I personally would rather have the telescoping hydraulic lift up front, but those are only gravity down. So when you're at the point where you're in a hurry or it's cold outside, sometimes it can take a very, very long time for those to come down. This heavy duty scissor lift was a compromise for me. From this angle, you can see how the ramps are installed and they're just basically sliding in on angle iron. They work quite well in there and they're out of the way. I'd rather have them underneath than on the side of the trailer. I believe Lamar says this is a 43 degree dump angle. I've had zero issue getting anything out of it. With the low profile, you will end up dumping and then driving forward slightly. So I always try to make sure I'm on level ground or I'm awful careful if I have a lot of weight up top. Either way, this trailer has suited us quite fine and I think it's a great trailer. It does have some pros and cons compared to the other ones. And I think that you have to basically find what is gonna work best for you. And that is tough between going between cost, quality, you know, construction, the paint. In some ways, the paint on this is far superior than any of the other dump trailers that we've had. And in some ways, I look at it and go, okay, the gray is going to be hard for me to match with the rattle can where black would be pretty simple with just some Rust-Oleum and touch-up if you need it to be. Either way, it's a very sharp trailer. We get compliments on it all the way around, mostly probably because of the gray. The gray is absolutely amazing. 
If you're looking at this trailer, if you want to ask me any questions, go ahead, feel free in the bottom. I'll try to answer that as we get more and more use on this trailer. I'll have more experience and I can answer the more in-depth questions. But at this point in time, my choices were between Diamond C, Lamar, and Low Trail. I knocked out PJ because I've had a PJ in the past. I didn't like some of the features that it had and I didn't really like the powder coating per se. It just seemed like it wasn't going to hold up long term and a lot of places were very thin. I wanted something in Michigan that was going to be able to hold up and last and look good still after five years and really be able to put up with heavy duty use. And again in here I'm hauling equipment in this also so this seemed to be the right position between cost and quality. So that's how I made my decision. Comments below, questions below. Give us a like in this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.